All right, the objections uh, overruled. Go ahead, Ms. Corey. Mrs. Simpkins, do you mind reading back my specific question for Mr. Atkins? What is your understanding of what happens to your game time in prison when you come back to Duval County? You don't get none. You lose it. You lose that benefit in prison from staying here. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am, that's true. Thank you. No further questions, Ron. May he be excused? He may. Mr. Strollin? Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. You're excused. State's next witness, please. <clears throat> Your Honor, the state next calls Mariah Grimes. And may Mr. Stroll and I approach Your Honor while she's approaching? Yes, Mariah Grimes. It's taken care of. Oh. Yes, right. that was the issue. Okay, Mariah Grimes, please. <laughs> Ms. Grimes, would you come all the way up to the front for me, please, ma'am? And right up here to the front, if you'll raise your right hand, the clerk will administer the oath to you. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Thank you. All right, ma'am, if you'll come right around here and have a seat for me in the witness chair. And if you scoot yourself up to the microphone, be sure and speak right into the microphone and speak loudly so everybody can hear you, all right? Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Be sure and speak up. Okay. Ms. Wolfson, go right ahead. Good afternoon, ma'am. Could you please state your name and spell it for the record? Okay. Mariah Grimes, M-A-R-I-A-H-G-R-I-M-E-S. Ms. Grimes, where are you currently employed? Gate Petra. Now, Ms. Grimes, how long have you been employed? Is this, is that, excuse me, let me strike that. Is that Gate Petroleum? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And Ms. Grimes, how long have you been employed by Gate Petroleum? Um, since September 2012. Now, Ms. Grimes, could you just speak into the microphone? Oh, September 2012. Okay, thank you. That's better. Now, do you work at a particular Gate gas station store? Yes, the Southside and Bay Meadows store. Since I started. Could you tell the jury what your role is at Gate Petroleum? Okay, I'm a CSR, which is a customer service representative, and I just ring customers up and do the cleaning and all that good stuff. Now, Ms. Grimes, I'd like to turn your attention back to November 23rd of 2012. Were you working on that particular day? Yes, I was. And were you working then at that particular Gate gas station store? Yes, I was. And that's here in Jacksonville? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Now, Ms. Grimes, what shift were you working on that day? Second shift, which is 2 to 10 p.m. And um, during that day when you were working, were you working then as a customer service representative? Yes, I was. When you're working um, at the gate gas station stores, are you assigned to a particular register? You get the register that's open when you go in, when you clock in. Lillian, which was our assistant manager at the time, and a coworker, Darion. Ms. Grimes, do you remember which particular register you were working at? Yes, I was at register number three. Now, could you explain to the jury when you're walking in to the gas station what the store looks like in terms of where the registers are? Okay, when you walk in, there you're immediately facing register number two. To your right is register one, and to your left is register number three. Now, Ms. Grimes, are those registers in a line? They curve. So you're facing two. One is off to the, left, the right side, and then over to the left is register number three. Okay. And is, are, are those three registers, is it one particular, strike that, is it one continuous counter? Yes. Okay. Now, did you work on register three then for your entire shift? Yes. Okay, and do you know uh, where your coworker Darian was working? Yeah, he had register number one. And then where was your assistant manager Lillian working? She had register number two. Ms. Grimes, during your shift, um, did anything out of the ordinary happen? 
Not until the incident with. Go ahead. No, the incident with the gunshots. Now, Ms. Grimes, where were you when you heard those gunshots? I was behind my register number three. Were you helping any or any customer when you were behind your register? Yes, I had a customer. Who were you helping? A woman who was buying a bag of chips and a bottle of wine. Do you remember what she looked like? She was tall, I would say mid-40s, brunette hair down to her shoulders, and she was dressed in nice clothes. Uh, me and my customer looked out front, outside the window, to see what was going on. Now, can you explain to the jury from behind register three, what window <coughs> would you be looking out of? In reference to where the front doors are. Okay, okay. Um, the front door is facing register two, so our first window pane that you could see from register number three. like. I don't know how to describe it. You could just see out to uh, the parking spots and the gas pumps. I don't know. And now, uh, Ms. Grimes, I'm showing you State's Exhibit 5. Is that up on your screen? OK. Um, and looking at State's Exhibit 5, can you circle which window it is that you would have been able to see out of? This one. And the column, the column kind of blocks the shot. Do you have a better one? Okay. Yeah, the same one. Then. This one. And then I believe six exhibit ten is that a closer? Okay, yeah. Photograph. Both of them. Okay, so those are then the two windows that you would have been able to see out of? Yes, ma'am. Now, Ms. Grimes, I'm looking at State's Exhibit 10. Can you tell the jury whether or not there's any signage on those windows that would prevent your view? At the time, there wasn't, but the first window, the one that doesn't have any sign, is the one I can see out the best. Okay. And then... Ms. Grimes, how many gunshots did you first hear? I heard about three gunshots, and that's when I looked out the window. a black four-door car and hands holding a gun rested on the windowsill. Now, I'm looking at State's Exhibit 10, Ms. Grimes. Can you put an X where you saw that black car? Now, I know you stated you saw hands. Yes, ma'am. Okay, was that two hands? Yes. Okay, and what were they holding? They were holding a silver gun. They were pointed outside of the driver's window, so north, I believe. So would they have been pointing into that parking spot that's right to the left of the X? Yes, ma'am. Could you tell from where you were if there was anything next to that black car? I did not see another car next to him. The car, I'm sorry. <laughs> now, um, Ms. Grimes, from where you were inside at the gas station, could you tell whether or not a door was open on that black car? Yes, the door was not open. Okay. Now, after initially looking at the front window, what did you do? I got down, and I said, he's shooting, he's shooting. And I got down, and then I got back up, and then looked out the window. And by that time, my customer had walked already to the door, the front door. And I watched her get into the passenger side of the car and then drive away. Now, Ms. Grimes, before she walked out of the store, did you hear any other benefits? Yes. How many gunshots in total did you hear? I heard about six more. And when you heard those six more gunshots, was that customer, was she still inside of the store? She, yes, she was making her way to the door. Now, at, when she walked towards the door, uh, Ms. Grimes, could you tell where she went when she got to the door? What do you mean? When your customer got to the front door of the gate store, could you see where she went? Yes, I watched her walk and get into the passenger side of the car. And once she got into the passenger side of the car, did you see what happened with that car? 
they just pulled from the spot and left. Just her, she said, Michael, what's going on? And then she left. Ms. Grimes, prior to these gunshots, could you hear any loud music come outside the store? I could not hear any music. Do you remember hearing any sort of an argument from within the store? No, ma'am. Now, Ms. Grimes, do you know whether or not the gate station has surveillance? I know we have surveillance inside the store, but not outside. Okay. Your Honor, this time I would ask to publish the gate station surveillance video. All right. Which is State Exhibit Yes, ma'am. Next to me to my left is register two, and then where he's standing, my coworker is register one. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. Good luck. I apologize. Sir. That's all right. I just Ms. couldn't hear. Ms. Grimes, I'm looking at the right corner of the surveillance footage. Do you see that receipt? Yes, ma'am. Does that then correspond to what the customer is purchasing? Yes. Yes, it is. Okay. Did you then have a conversation with her and tell her what you had seen? Yes, ma'am. Now, at some point, Ms. Grimes, did the police arrive on the scene? Yes, they did. Prior to the police arriving on scene, did you ever go outside? No, I didn't. May I approach the witness, Your Honor? Yes, ma'am.
And for the record, I'm showing Ms. Brunt has previously been entered into evidence as State's Exhibit 169. Ms. Brunt, I'm showing you State's want Exhibit 169. Do you recognize this? Yes, I printed it out for the police, ma'am. And what is State's Exhibit 169? The receipt that uh, the lady that was purchasing the stuff, her receipt. Permission to publish, Your Honor? Yes, ma'am. And again, ladies and gentlemen, if you can't, you in the back row, if you can't see it very well, uh, you'll have an opportunity to look at it carefully and uh, more closely when you take it back to the jury room to deliberate your verdict. Now, Ms. Grimes, did the woman who was making the purchase, did she actually complete her purchase? She never took the products or her change. But I did cash her out. Okay. Moment, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Just one last question. Mr. Okay. We'll just take a moment to get the screenshot. Is that microphone on the podium working? Yeah. I Battery die. This one? Now it's on. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Grimes, looking at the screenshot that's up there right now, can you just circle for the jury where the front door is? Yes, one second. Yeah. Okay. I have no further questions at this time, Your Honor. Mr. Stroll across. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> Good afternoon, Ms. Grimes. How are you? I'm fine. Looking at that video that was just up there, you're familiar with the gate surveillance video. Obviously, in the store, you know there's videos there. Yes, ma yes, sir. And there's several of them. Yes. And matter of fact, on that video, you could click on every different video and get that different angle from that camera, correct? Yes. And audio is being recorded, correct? Yes. And matter of fact, isn't it true the first time you actually saw that video, you saw it online because your aunt told you the news posted your video online, right? Yes. Okay. And when you took your depot, you actually referred in your answers of, I didn't remember saying that until I saw it online. What part are you talking about? What did the part I say where you that I down? Do you remember do you remember not even ducking down until you saw it on the video and saying, "Oh my god?" I don't remember saying that to be honest. Okay. And <laughs> do you recall again the first time seeing it it was out in the news and your family member had had you watch it? Yes, a few months later, I believe. Okay. And isn't it true that your testimony is the gentleman you saw shooting that gun, his hands were on the windowsill the entire time, correct? Yes. And by windowsill, you mean the driver's windowsill? Yes. Right. He wasn't leaning out of the car? No. He didn't open the door and jump out of the car? I didn't see him do that, no. Okay. Um, and matter of fact, when you popped back up, you could clearly see him, correct? I just saw hands. I didn't know if it was male or female. But I meant you could clearly see in front of you. Oh, yes, I can. And just, I know the video is kind of on an angle. May I move your arm? Yes, sir. Thank you. And I know on video it's kind of funny. Even though this is cash register three, let's pretend you're at your register three, right? Okay. Register two would be right over here? Yes. And then register one would kind of be around the corner where Darian Eights was. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And matter of fact, there's cameras at every, the front door, cash register one, two, three, the office, the cooler, things like that, correct? Yes. Okay. You can see that from the same video. You just have to click on it, correct? Uh, yes. Okay. Now, from where you are, let's just again assume your cash register three from the video. What you saw was directly in front of you, correct? Yes. All right. So, not to say cash register one is the first one in line. The way gate works, it's kind of odd. I know it's on an angle, right? Mm -hmm. And then when yes. you walk in the door, you go to the left, your cash register is right there, correct? Yes. And the very first spot is right in front of you, correct? Yes, okay. it is. Isn't it also true that you couldn't see anything? to your right next to that car shooting? I couldn't see two more spaces pass. Okay. And isn't it true you couldn't see any vehicle or red SUV next to him? Isn't that correct? That is correct. And you couldn't see anything to two spaces over. Is that correct? That's correct. And then so there's no SUV next to him? No. There's no SUV in the third spot next to him? Correct. 
and then you couldn't see the fourth because there's a column, correct? Yes, sir. And at that point, there's some things on the window that blocked your view? Correct. Okay. So your testimony is when you saw the firing and you see the hands on the windowsill, nobody's next to him for two spots, correct? Correct. And you'd also agree there was a lot of news coverage in this case. We talked about that a little bit. Yes, none directed towards me though. Like I never. Well, not that you gave interviews, but yeah. they put your video. They put that online, right? Yes, they did. And that's how you found it. It wasn't the state attorneys. Your aunt showed it to you. Yes. Okay. And isn't it true that night? And again, you were freaked out. Fair to say. Correct. You ever been through anything like that before? No, I haven't. It's extremely scary, is it not? It is. Okay, and did it shake you up? It did. I think at one point, if I recall from the video, Miss Christensen said you want to take a minute, and I think you even walked away from the counter to kind of catch your breath. I did. Okay, and at that point, do you remember talking to Darian Eights about what just had happened, your co-employee? Uh, I believe I did talk to him. And you talked to Lillian Christensen? Objection, Your Honor. Sustained. What does I'm not going into, if I may approach Your Honor? All right, with the representation that the question is just did you have the conversation, not anything beyond that, it's overruled. Go ahead, Mr. Strollo. Thank you. Would you like me to rephrase the question or can you remember it? Uh, rephrase, please. Okay. Do you recall having conversations with Darian Eights about what happened that night? Yes. Okay. Do you recall having conversations with Lillian Christensen, the assistant manager, that night? Yes. Okay. Did you also talk to other customers in the store about what had just happened? I believe talking to them, but not getting into depth what I saw. Okay. And anything, and again, everything recorded is fair and accurate, correct? Yes. Nothing you saw looked like anybody tampered with it, is that correct? No. And would you admit, if you did have conversations, they would be recorded and you'd hear the audio? Yes. Okay. So we'll, we'll say the video, we'll agree the video is kind of the best evidence? Yes. <laughs> okay. Now, you were there when the witnesses were brought in. Is that correct? You were inside the store still? Yes, I was inside the store. And how many witnesses were inside the gate gas station? I don't know the number, but there was quite a few people that were brought in. About 10, maybe a little more? Roughly. Okay. And they weren't allowed to go on half of the store because that's where the potato chips and wine were, correct? Correct. So they were put on the other half of the gate gas station store. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And everybody was about five, six feet away from each other. Is that a fair representation? I suppose. Okay. And in fact, do you recall saying that officers were actually standing outside the door of the gate gas station? They were. Okay. Once they arrived. Right. And at one point, they weren't even inside. They were standing in front of that door so people couldn't come in and leave. Is that correct? Yes. There was one, I believe, inside. He was coming in and out. And matter of fact, when that one got out, do you recall if, if Ms. Christensen actually locked the door so people couldn't come in and out? Yes. And that officer tried to come back in and was locked out, wasn't he? Correct. He got a little upset because he got locked out? Yes. Okay. And then he had Ms. Christensen unlock the door again? Mm-hmm. That's a yes? Yes. Okay. Now, and obviously people were still talking inside the gate gas station, correct? We were not talking about what happened because we were instructed not to. Well, let me ask you this. 
How long were you there before those witnesses were brought into the gate gas station? That I don't know. Okay. How long it was. So when were you instructed not to talk to people about it? When they were actually brought all of them, all the people inside. Right. So people were still talking about it before there was even an instruction not to. Is that fair to say? Just the people that were inside the store and nobody that was outside, like at the pumps and stuff. Okay. And you have no idea if people outside were talking about it because clearly you wouldn't be able to hear that you were inside. Is that fair? That's correct. Okay. And at that point, were people using their cell phones inside the store? That I don't remember. Was it possible that people could have even been texting? Objection, Your Honor. Speculation. Sustained. Did you see anybody texting? Not that I recall. I didn't log it away. Okay, so you weren't paying attention to the other people. You were paying attention to your kind of co-workers? Correct. Okay. And again, were you still pretty shaken up about it? I was. Okay. And is it fair to say that your entire observation and what you witnessed, my client never got out of the car to shoot. His hands were on the windowsill the entire time. Is that correct? That is what I witnessed, yes. Judge, no further questions. Thank you, Ms. Crime. Ms. Wolfson? Just briefly, Your Honor. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Grimes, prior to hearing those first, the first set of shots, those three shots, were you looking out of the window? No. What were you doing? I was ringing out my customer. Okay. Um, now, also, the conversations Mr. Strolla just referenced, the ones you had with the people inside of the store, that was all prior to the police coming in to the store. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. I have no further questions, Your Honor. May she be excused? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Stroll? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you, ma'am. You're excused. Appreciate you being here. Thank you. State's next witness. Your Honor, state next calls Lillian Christensen. Lillian Christensen, please. Good afternoon, ma'am. If you'll come forward for me, please. And right here, if you'll raise your right hand, the clerk will administer the oath. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? All right, ma'am, thank you. If you'll come right around here and have a seat for me, please. And if you'll scoot yourself up and be speak directly into that microphone and speak up loudly so everybody can hear you, all right? All right. Thank you very much. Ms. Wolfson? Good afternoon, ma'am. Could you please state and spell your name for the record? Lillian Christensen, Lillian, L-I-L-L-I-A-N, Christensen, C-H-R-E-S-T-E-N-S-E-N. -E -E now, Ms. Christensen, do you live here in Jacksonville? Yes, I do. And are you currently employed? Yes, I am. Where do you currently work? With a quick trip to Texaco. What do you do for Texaco? I work in a convenience store. How long have you worked for Texaco? Since October. Was that of 2013? Of 2013, yes. Now, Ms. Christensen, where did you work prior to your current job at Texaco? Gate Petroleum. How long did you work for Gate Petroleum? 16 years. Ms. Christensen, what was your position within Gate Petroleum? Assistant manager. Now, prior to leaving Gate Petroleum, did you work at a particular store? Prior to working for Gate? Oops, strike that. Prior to leaving Gate, which store were you working at? At the time I left, I was working on Bay Meadows Road. Now, Ms. Christensen, I'd like to turn your attention to November 23rd of 2012. Were you working that day? Yes, I was. Now, which store were you working at that day? I was working at the store located at the corner of Southside Boulevard and Bay Meadows. 
Well, and what was your position at that particular store? Assistant manager. Could you explain to the jury what your duties entailed being an assistant manager? Overseeing operations, making sure that things run smoothly. Now, back on November 23rd of 2012, what hours were you working? 1 p.m. to 9 p.m. Who else was working with you that day? Mariah Grimes and Darion Eights. Ms. Christensen, while you were working that day, did you work at a particular register? I worked at register two. And is it fair to say that when you walk into the gate store, then register two would be straight ahead? Yes. Okay, with register one to your right, register three to the left? If you were walking into the store, register one would be on your right and three would be on your left. Now, Ms. Christensen, can you explain to the jury what, they, what the layout is of the gas station in terms of whether or not there's a back office, if there's a back hallway, a bathroom, things of that nature? If you were coming into the store, the first thing you would see would be the register area, off to your right, the coffee area. Towards the back, you'd see a hallway where the restrooms would lead off to the right. You could see an emergency exit straight to the back. To the right of the uh, emergency exit would be an office door, and to the left would be a door to the back room. Now, Ms. Christensen, what happens in the back room? What is the back room used for? Uh, there's the entrance to the cooler, there's a storage area, and there's a three-part sink for washing. During your shifts, then, when you're working at the gas station, do you typically have to go in, into that back room and into the office since you are the assistant manager? Yes. Now, at some point during your shift, Ms. Christensen, did something unusual happen? Uh, yes. What happened? I heard gunshots. And where were you when you first heard those gunshots? I was in the back room. What were you doing in the back room? Washing coffee carafes. Do you remember how many gunshots you heard while you were in that back room? I believe initially I heard three shots. And from where you were, could you tell whether or not they were happening inside the store? No, I wasn't sure at first. Are there windows in that back room that let you see out into the store? No, there is not. What did you do after you heard the first set of gunshots? I stopped what I was doing and started slowly moving out towards the hall area. And why did you do that? To find out, try to start finding out what was happening, try to assess what the situation was. Ms. Christensen, as you were coming out into that back hallway, did you hear more gunshots? Yes, I did. How many more gunshots did you hear at that point in time? Three to four. From where you were when you heard that second set of gunshots, could you see the registers and out to the front of the store? Um, if I were looking in that direction, I would have been able to. I was not looking in that direction. Could you tell at that point where the second set of gunshots was coming from? I believed it to be more outside than inside. And what made you think that? Uh, it was it seemed more muffled to be than to be inside. After hearing the second round of gunshots, did you then keep walking out front? Yes, I did. And were you heading towards the registers? Yes, I was. Now, prior to getting to the registers, did you hear any more gunshots? Um, Yes, I did. How many more gunshots did you hear? I believe it was three to four. After hearing the last round of gunshots, Ms. Christensen, where did you go? Um, at that time, I was right at the end of the hallway in an open area between the hall hallway and the register area. I stopped at that point. What was the atmosphere like inside the store at that point in time? It was quiet inside the store. Um, but I could hear Mariah Grimes saying he's shooting at them. 
sustain. Please don't say what other folks might have said. Yeah. Ms. Christensen, at some point did you approach Mariah Grimes and get up to where she was? Yes, I did. What was her demeanor like? She was very excited. Was she panicked? Yes. Did you also then get up to where Darian Eights was? Yes. And what was Mr. Eights like? Stunned. Now, Ms. Christensen, when you walked up near the registers, did you notice whether or not there was a customer with, in front of Mariah Grimes' register? Uh, before I reached that area, yes, I, I saw a customer standing near register three. And can you describe her for the jury? Um, Caucasian, dark hair. She was wearing a, what appeared to be a black skirt suit. And Ms. Christensen, after hearing those gunshots, did you then see that same woman walk out the front door of the store? Uh, I saw her walking towards the doors. And did you say anything to her as she was walking towards the front doors? I said, oh, hon, please don't go out there. Did she listen to you? No. How would you describe that woman's demeanor? as she was walking to the front doors? Unsure. Could you tell from where you were where she, where she went when she walked out the front doors? Yes, I could see that she was walking towards a car parked in front of the store. Now, Ms. Christensen, do you know exactly where that car was parked? It was parked in the first parking place next to the entrance of the store. Could you see where that woman went? I saw her get into the vehicle. From where you were, could you see if anyone else was inside the car? Once I had moved to in, at register three, I could make out a image of a male behind the wheel of the car. Okay, so in the driver's seat? Yes. Now, as you were looking out the window, Ms. Christensen, did you see whether or not that car left? I'm sorry? Could you see from where you were whether or not that vehicle that she had just gotten into, whether or not it left? Yes, it did leave. Okay, and um, how did that car leave? Calmly. Did you see the direction in which it went? Yes. And which direction did that car leave in? headed towards Southside Boulevard. After you saw that car leave, did you then speak with your employees about what had happened? Not that I recall. Do you remember Ms. Christensen making a 911 call? Yes. Okay. And when was it that you made the 911 call? Um, there was someone in the store that said they had the tag number and I wrote that down and made the 911 call after that. Permission to publish your under the 911 call? Yes, ma'am. It was admitted. It's, okay. it's Exhibit 167. Director, my mom, my my name is Lillian Christensen, assistant manager at Gate Store 1187, located at 8251 Southside Boulevard. Uh, we had shots fired in the parking lot. Um, the person firing has left, but we did get a license number. Okay. The license number is 937-V as in Victor, M as in Mason. V as in Victor. Okay. And what did you see the color make the model of that car? It was it was a dark car. It appeared to be black. I couldn't tell the maker model. I'm sorry. 
And was the person inside of the... The person was... Uh, th there was a person here inside the store attempting to make a purchase. Okay. Um, the person in the uh, that was driving the vehicle was the one shooting out of the vehicle at somebody else, but we don't know what happened. Right. Oh, here's a police officer right here, sir. Okay, there's an officer right. here. Thank right. you. No problem. Direct the 911 gain is. My name. No, Miss Christensen. In that call, you can hear that an officer comes into the store. Yes. When that officer came into the store, did you give him the tag number that you had? Yes, I did. May I approach the witness, Your Honor? Yes, ma'am. This Ms. Christensen, the tag that you handed over to the officer? Yes. Now, Ms. Christensen, does the gate gas station have surveillance? Yes, it does. And as the assistant manager, do you know whether or not there is exterior surveillance footage at that particular gate gas station? We did not have exterior. Okay. When police arrived on scene, did you aid them and help them with their, with their investigation? I did what I could. Okay. And did that include then giving them a disc of the surveillance footage that you did have? Yes, it did. I have a moment, Your Honor? Yes, ma'am. No further questions, Your Honor, at this time. Mr. Stroller Cross. Thank you, Your Honor. Good afternoon, Ms. Christensen. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Now, in relation to that... DVD. You made a copy of the store surveillance for the officer that night, correct? Yes, I did. And matter of fact, you were proactive. You took it on your own to make them a copy without them even asking you, correct? I asked them if they wanted me to, yes. Right, that's what I'm saying. You approached the detectives and said, would you like me to make you a copy? Yes, I did. Right. So they were on scene but never asked for one. They had not at that point. Right. And isn't it also true that they gave you the timeline, they told you, we want you to start when the woman walked in and then when the woman leaves, correct? I was playing the video back. An officer told me when to start, when to stop. And then you burned them a copy, correct? Correct. Okay. And that was for about that period of time. You recall that's when it was from, is when the woman walked in and the woman left? I don't recall exactly. Is it possible? Yes. Okay. And they didn't ask you, hey, give us an hour afterwards when all those witnesses were inside the store, correct? No, they didn't. Okay. And if they did, you would have given them that video, correct? Absolutely. And you would recall that they wanted an hour of all the witnesses inside the store, if that's true, correct? Yes. Now, you don't recall the number of shots that were fired. You just remember being in the back and hearing shots coming out, correct? Yes. Okay. And I think last time we talked, you had grown up or you knew how gunfire was. You knew it was gunfire, correct? Yes, I did. All right. When you came out, when you come down that hallway, cash register three is off to your right, correct? Yes, it is. It's behind the cigarettes and everything there? Yes. So you couldn't see Mariah Grimes until you came around, I guess, register one is what they call it. There's that little opening to walk in. No, actually, from from where I was standing in the hall, in that open area, yes, I could see Register 3. But could you see Mariah Grimes? Was she still ducking down or was she standing? I don't, I wasn't focused on her. I was actually focused on the woman. Right. And then the woman walked outside, correct? It, it yes, at later point she did, yes. She had no fear or hesitation. Even you told her don't go out there. She had no hesitation. And that was even after you said, don't go out there. Right. Now, when the witnesses were inside the store, the officers never physically separated people, correct? They just said, don't talk about it? That's correct. And officers were going in and out. Is that true? Yes. Matter of fact, at one point, I believe you had the door locked because they had asked you to lock the door so nobody could come in and out. Yes. Okay. And then an officer tried to get back in and got upset with you because the door was locked? 
Do you recall that? I don't recall that, no. Okay. Do you recall locking the door? I do recall locking the door. And do you recall no officers being inside when you locked that door? No, I don't recall whether there was an officer inside at that point or not. Oh, is it possible? You just don't have the recollection of it? It's possible. Okay. And obviously this was a traumatic event for you? Yes, it was. How many copies of that video did you get officers that night? I only recall one. Okay. Did they ever come back and ask you for any other video? Not me personally. Okay. Did they ever come back and ask you for any extended video of the audio that was being recorded inside the gate gas station? Not me personally. Are you aware of one being made? I believe that uh, the manager was asked to make another disc. And that was Barry Friedman? Yes. Okay. And he was the manager over you when you worked there? Yes. Okay. And would you agree that even when officers were there and everything that was going on, would you agree that it was kind of organized chaos going yes. on at the gas station? Yes. Is that a fair and accurate representation? That is how I would describe it, yes. I'm not putting any words in your mouth? Not this time. Okay. <laughs> now, you heard your 911 call, correct? Yes. Okay. And you had talked about you had the license. May, may I approach your honor? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Excuse me. Okay. I believe the state showed you this exhibit. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And how do you recognize this? That's my handwriting, and I that appears to be one of the bags that we kept at the store. Okay. So that's your handwriting? Yes, it is. Are you positive? Yes, I am. And that's a bag from inside the store? That's where it would have come from, yes. And I'm not putting words in your mouth? Again, not this time. Okay. At any time so far, have I put words in your mouth, Ms. Christensen? Today, no. Okay. Anything we've talked about? Not today. Okay. So far, we're doing okay? So far. Okay. And is it fair to say that when you talked to officers that night, you told them everything that you heard, saw, and did? To the best of my ability. And you indicated, correct me if I'm wrong, that the car that you believe the gunfire came from backed out and left. I, your word was calmly? Yes. Didn't squeal its tires, didn't take off anything did like not. that? Did not. Okay. Did you ever see a car do that? Did you ever have a chance to see a red Durango squeal its tires and take off? A red Durango? Yes, ma'am. Not that I recall. Okay. And did you ever see a red Durango come back on scene? I wasn't aware of a red Durango. Okay. Even as we sit here today, you have no knowledge, personal knowledge, that you ever saw one come or go? At that point in time, I had no focus on a red Durango, no. And... Are you, you were familiar, obviously, with recording those DVDs. You were the assistant manager for a pretty lengthy time at Gate, correct? Right. And then you knew what you were doing. You knew how to record it. Is that correct? No. You did I not actually, know how to? It had been so long since I had done it, I actually had, I believe, called the supervisor to get him to refresh my memory on how it was done. So when you recorded it that night, it was actually coming from a Gate supervisor telling you how to do it? How to bring up the system to do it, yes. And then record it? Right. Okay. And you took that DV and you gave it to an officer? Yes. Do you remember who you gave it to? I don't remember which officer it was, no. Is it the same officer you went up to and asked if they would like a copy of it? No, it wasn't. How did you get into a different officer, if you recall? Um, I did, was it just a different officer, I believe, that came into the office while I was in there? Okay. So you had approached an officer outside? Yes. Go inside, call your supervisor how to do it. Yes. And then you give it to another officer. Yes. And then after that, you've never, never made another copy, correct? Not to my knowledge. Well, I'm asking about you, you nobody else. I, I only, to, to my recollection, I only burned one CD that night. Okay, and that was just based on when the officer was over there watching you saying, okay, start it there, stop it there, is that fair? That's fair, yes. Okay. Nothing further. Thank you, Ms. Christensen. Anything further from the state? No, Your Honor. May she be excused? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Stroll? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Thank you, ma'am. We appreciate you being here. You're excused. Can I see uh, counsel at the sidebar for a minute?
Yes, sir. Jim. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we have one more witness that is relatively short that's uh, been here for a while, so I'd like to try and take that person if we can. Um, so, Ms. Wolfson? Yes, Your Honor. State Clause Samantha Ikes. Samantha Ikes. Good afternoon, ma'am. If you'll come forward here to the front and uh, raise your right hand, the clerk will administer the oath to you. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Thank All right, ma'am. If you'll come right around here for me and have a seat. And once you're comfortable, if you scoot kind of up to that microphone, be sure to speak right into it and speak loudly so everybody can hear you. All right? Okay. Ms. Wolfson? Good afternoon, ma'am. Could you please state and spell your name for the record? My name is Samantha Ikes, S-A-M-A-N-T-H-A-E-I-C-H-A-S. Ms. Ikes, do you live here in Jacksonville? I do. And are you currently employed? I am. Where do you currently work? Advanced Auto Parts. In which, is there a particular location of Advanced Auto Parts that you work at? The Bay Meadows location. Now, Ms. Ikes, how long have you worked at Advanced Auto Parts? A year and four months. And what is your current job description there? A delivery driver. Could you explain to the jury what it means to be a delivery driver? I bring parts from our store to local garages and businesses. Now, Ms. Ikes, when you make those deliveries, do you use a company car? I do. Are there multiple company cars that you have at your disposal? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Ikes, I'd like to turn your attention to November 23rd of 2012. Were you working that particular night at Advanced Auto Parts? Yes, I was. Do you remember what hours you were working? Normally a one to close shift, so 9 o'clock, 1 o'clock to 9 o'clock. 1 o'clock to 9 o'clock? Mm -hmm. And Ms. Ikes, if you could just make sure that you speak up into the microphone that's in front of you. Now, on that particular night, Ms. Ikes, at some point, did you leave the store and go get a cup of coffee? Yes, ma'am. Around what time was it when you left the store? Around 7 o'clock, right around there. Okay. And Ms. Ikes, where did you go to get your cup of coffee? The gate gas station on Southside. Is that a gate gas station that you are familiar with? Yes, ma'am. And how often do you go to that gas station? Four times a week. Now, when you left to go get a cup of coffee, what car were you driving? My white work truck. And that's a company car? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, Ms. Ikes, I'm going to show you a photograph. This is State's Exhibit 3. Looking at State's Exhibit 3, can you explain to the jury where Advanced Auto Parts is? If you go down um, Southside and take a right onto Bay Meadows, it's the next stoplight on your left-hand side. 
Okay, and can you put a little line where Bay Meadows is on the screen? If you touch it, you should be able to mark it. So from, from where you were working at Advanced Auto Parts, which direction of travel did you take to get to the gate gas station? I was headed east. Headed east on Bay Meadows? Yes. And then was your intention to turn left onto south side? Yes, ma'am. Now, Ms. Ikes, I'm looking at the intersection of Bay Meadows and south side, and I know it's a little bit off of this photograph. Did you stop at that light that night where you stopped? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And were your windows up or down in the truck? My driver's side window was down about two inches. And what about the passenger side? It was up. Okay. Was anyone else in the truck with you? No, ma'am. And Ms. Ikes, did you have any music on? No, ma'am. Were you on the phone? Yes, ma'am. And who were you on the phone with? My friend, Jen. Now, Ms. Ikes, as you were stopped at that intersection, actually strike that, what lane were you in when you were stopped at the intersection? I was in the left-hand turning lane, but the right-hand lane to turn okay. left. Okay, so just for the jury's knowledge, are there two then left-hand turning lanes yes. there? Okay. As you were stopped at that light, what did you hear? I heard gunshots. Could you tell where the gunshots were coming from? No, ma'am. And from where you were, could you see the gunshots at all, like the muzzle flashes or anything? No, ma'am. Do you remember how many gunshots you heard? No, ma'am. Do you remember if it was one big series of gunshots or multiple sets? It was one big series. Okay. Ms. Ikes, what did you do once the light turned green? I took a left onto Southside and then took a right into the gas station parking lot. And will you, um, you can draw on this as well to show the jury where exactly you turned right. I turned left here and took a right into there. And Ms. Ikes, this is now State's Exhibit 2. Is that up on your screen? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and is this then just a close-up of that entrance into the gate station? Yes. And can you show the jury then where you went once you turned right? I came in through here. Ma'am, you need to speak into that microphone. Oh. I came in through right here and parked right in front of the ice machine. Okay, and just so the record's clear then and based on what you drew, you turned right once you came into the entrance and then turned left up and parked in front of the gate gas station? Yes, ma'am. Where did you park when you got to the gate gas station? Right in front of the ice machine. And once you parked, did you immediately get out of your truck? No, ma'am. What were you doing? I was still on the phone with my friend Jen. What did you notice as you were sitting in your truck? Um, I was sitting there finishing up my conversation, and a red SUV pulled in next to me. When that red SUV pulled in next to you, did they pull into the spot directly next to you? Yes, ma'am. And what did you do once you noticed there was a car next to you? I noticed that there were bullet holes in the side of the car, so my window was down a little, and I asked if everybody was okay. Ms. Ikes, I'm now showing you State's Exhibit 43. Does that picture look familiar? Yes. And what is that a photograph of? The car that pulled up next to me. So when you look to your left, this is what you saw? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Ikes, when you first asked if everyone was, was okay, were you still inside your truck? Yes, ma'am. Was anyone outside of the red SUV? Yeah. Um, the passenger side and I believe the driver also got out. And those would be the front seats? Yes. And Ms. Ikes, I'm showing you State's Exhibit 4. Is that white truck your truck? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And then State's Exhibit 8, is, it, is that a close-up? Yes. And Ms. Ikes, is that then exactly where you parked your car? Yes, ma'am. Did, did you see where the two people out of the car were actually standing? Could you see where they were? No, ma'am. Okay. At some point, did you see where they were standing? They were standing in front of the car once I had gotten out of the car. And when did you get out of the truck? Um, I had gotten out, out of the truck after they said everybody was okay. I got out and I walked to the front of the red SUV, and that's when someone said call 911. When you got out of the truck, where were they located? They were located, one, from my knowledge that I remember, one was in front of the truck next to me, and I don't know where the other one was. Now, did you have an opportunity to observe their demeanor? Yes, they looked shocked, is the way I could explain it.
And I believe, Ms. Ike, as you stated, that at some point you called 911? Yes, ma'am. When was it um, that you called 911? Right after someone said to call 911. And where were you when you called 911? Right in front of the ice machine, standing in front of the red truck. Um, af after you were on the phone with 911, did rescue and Jacksonville Sheriff's Office members arrive on scene? Yes, ma'am. Did you ever see anyone else get out of the SUV or be taken out of the SUV? Not that I noticed, no. And Ms. Ikes, were you eventually asked to wait inside at the gate gas station? Yes, ma'am. And eventually, did you speak with a police officer that night? I spoke to a detective, yes. I have a moment, Your Honor. Yes, ma'am. No further questions, Your Honor. Mr. Stroll across. Thank you, Your Honor. Good afternoon, Ms. Ikes. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. Safe to say, pretty chaotic scene that night. Yes, sir. People running around back and forth. Mm-hmm. Yes. Were you a little shaken up yourself? Yes, sir. Ever been through anything like that before? Never. Ever have a car pull up next to you with bullet holes in it? Never. Ever been around anything that had bullet holes in it? No. Now, you actually work in the auto industry, auto parts? I do. Okay. How long have you done that? Over a year. Okay. And over a year now or then? Uh, now. Okay. Back then, isn't it true when the red SUV pulled up next to you, they didn't come screeching their brakes or coming in fast or revving the engine? They kind of drove in. You didn't even notice they pulled in. True? Uh, true because I was on the phone. I really wasn't paying attention to it. Right. And if a truck pulls in next to you at a high rate of speed and brakes hard, you would have looked over and noticed that, correct? Yes. And that did not happen, did it? No, I just saw it out of my peripheral. And the car was already stopped. Or the truck was already stopped. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Yes. Is that fair to say? Yes. Okay. Now, in that aspect, you actually look over and say, is everybody okay? And you get no response. Isn't that true? No. I, someone had said yes. Okay. And then nobody asked you to call 911 until you get out of your vehicle, correct? Correct. And you were in your vehicle for 30 seconds, a minute, still talking to your friend? Roughly, yes. Because, matter of fact, you were telling your friend, oh, my God, there's a truck next to me shot up. Exactly. All right. You're telling her kind of the story of what's going on. Mm-hmm. So, yes. Okay. You get out. Yes. They then tell you to call 911. Yes. And you said they seem scared and shocked. Just like shocked. That. Okay. Like, did you call 911? I did. When you're on the phone with 911, are you still in almost a panic because of what's going on? Yes, sir. All right. Are you watching what other people are doing? No, sir. Okay. Are you keeping track of where people are coming and going? No, sir. And you said you're in front of the ice machine, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. So you can't testify, nor would you testify, where anybody was standing or where they were? No, sir. Now, when you called 911, did anybody have a cell phone in their hand? Not that I recall. All right. Do you recall which gentleman, what they look like who asked you to call 911? No, I do not. Do you see what side of the truck they got out of? All I remember is a gentleman getting out of the front passenger seat. Okay. And that was the person that told you to call 911? I do not recall who told me to oh, call Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. You just remember him getting out. Right. What about the driver? Where'd he go? I have, I do not recall. Even to this day, would you recognize them? No. Okay. Now, you were on scene for quite a while. I think they wouldn't even let you leave, correct? Correct. And one of the officers even said you had parked on some casings? Yes. Okay. Now, let me ask you this. You were driving your boyfriend's truck, correct? No, I was driving my company vehicle. All right. And in, did you have a chance when I did your depot to look over and have it reviewed? I, missed, I think Mr. Guy read you the police report. Yes. And in that report, it was inaccurate. They said it was your boyfriend's truck, right? Yes. And it wasn't. Right. Did you ever tell them it was your boyfriend's truck? No. Okay. Now, after you get off the phone with 911, did you ever give your phone to somebody else to call 911, anything like that? No, sir. Did you ever give it to any of the guys driving the truck? No. You actually went in the store, correct? Yes. And at that point, did you call your boyfriend and tell him what was going on? Yes. Okay. And that was inside Gate Gas Station? Yes. How long were you inside Gate Gas Station talking to your boyfriend on the phone? Talking to him on the phone? Yes. I had kept him updated throughout the whole process. Okay. Telling him what's going on? Right. Because he was my manager at work where I was working, so I had to keep him updated on what was going on. Okay. And do you recall where you were standing inside the gate gas station when they brought you in? I was standing in front of the counter. Okay. And I know, and again, that gate's kind of odd. You walk in mm -hmm. on an angle, and it's an L shape. Do you remember where in the L shape you were in relation? Right in the corner. Okay. Of the uh, two spots. 
So as soon as you walked into the door, right there on your left? Yes, sir. Right next to a cash register? Yes. Okay. Are you aware that there's video surveillance there? Yes. Okay. You aware if there's even audio surveillance there? I am not aware. Okay. But when you were in the store waiting to even talk to the police, you were still on the phone? Yes. Kind of. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, even afterwards and you're in the store a length of time, it's still a chaotic, crazy scene? Yeah. People coming in and out? Yeah. Okay. And you're still on the phone talking to your boyfriend? Throughout the process, yes. Not the whole time. Uh, correct. And, and how long of a time frame were you in the gate gas station? Um, I believe they let me go around 9 o'clock. Okay. And you had got there, obviously, just after 7.40 when the shots were fired. Right around there, yeah. Okay. Do you remember how long you were outside before they told you to go inside? No, sir. And the officers never physically separated people. They just said, don't talk about it, correct? Right. But people were still talking inside the store? Not about what had happened, but people were conversating, yes. Right. And you were on your cell phone? Not the whole time, but... No, I agree, yes. but you were using your cell phone. Yes. Were other people using their cell phone? Mm, I don't recall. All right. Were you even paying attention if they were? No. Okay. So we're not saying they weren't. You just don't know if they were because you weren't looking. Yes. Okay. Did you ever do anything else other than what you've testified and what you told the police? No. And everything you've said here today is what you told the officers? Yes. Okay. And again, just for clarification, you couldn't identify any of the men in the, in the SUV? No, sir. And again, you don't know what they were doing or where they were? Nope. Even prior to you going into the store? No. Even while you were in the store? Um, I mean, the group of people who they put in the gas station, we were all kind of in the same area. Right. In the front of the store. And again, you don't know what's going on outside. No. But you do say people are still coming and going. It's a chaotic scene. Right. Okay. Nothing further, Judge. Thank you. Ms. Wilson. Just anything? briefly, Your Honor. Ms. Ikes, you just stated um, in response to one of Mr. Strola's questions that you were on the phone with your boyfriend. In the gas station? In the gas station, yes. yes ma'am. And that he was your assistant manager at the time? Yes. Were you having to explain to him where you were and where your work truck was? Yes. I have no further questions, Your Honor. May she be excused? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Strola? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. You're excused. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that will conclude things for today. Um, it's about 5.15. And as I mentioned to you, we will resume tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Uh, so, yes, you can put your notes in your envelope there, and then uh, the bailiffs will take custody of those for the evening. And then you'll be able to go back to the jury room to pick up whatever belongings you have and then be transported back to um, your accommodations. And uh, thank you for your time and attention this afternoon and into the early evening. And we'll look forward to seeing you all again uh, tomorrow morning. Remember, please, do not discuss the case among yourselves or allow anyone to discuss the case with you. Uh, obviously, do not look at television. I know that's kind of taken care of for you <laughs> at the uh, hotel, but just in case, don't watch television, don't read the newspapers, don't get uh, on the Internet. Uh, watch out for banners going across the television set if you are watching some TV under certain supervision. And um, you understand all of that and you remember my admonition. So uh, keep that in mind. You all have a great evening and we'll see you tomorrow morning. Thank you again. Valerie, thanks for being All right, the jury's out of the courtroom. Anything else uh, that we need to do this evening, Miss Corey?
Your Honor, I would like to give Mr. Crowell a copy of the evidence list, which I furnished to the clerk. I'd like to send one look. The rest of the physical exhibits, the way that we did this for the record is that we went to the property room, looked through everything, decided what was going to be prepared for trial. I'd like to get that done so tomorrow we can just pull it starting tomorrow the next day. Get everything just moved in without Okay. Um, I can make it all available within tonight or tomorrow morning, depending on what time you're going to start. We're going to start at 9. Yes, sir. Uh, I mean, that's up to you, Mr. Strola, how you want to work that out with the state about looking at these things. Are they, I mean, you've seen most of it, haven't you? I believe I've, I've seen what's been packaged. And all of it's basically, as I understand it, come in without objection. Unless there's something, different wrong. Unless there's something yes. right, wrong. right. But so, thus far, it's without objection. So far, it's okay. Well, I'm with you. Okay. Um, all right, well, I mean, you work that out when you, if, we, if you want to do it this evening or tomorrow, it doesn't matter to me, but I'd like to be done so that, uh, yes, that will be accomplished and then it'll make things continue to move along smoothly. Yes, sir. And I have, uh, I have a quick list and you have comments for both of you, and I'll also the deposition if you all have questions that the same electronic copy. Okay, that way I'll have a copy of them in case you or anybody needs to use one for impeachment purposes. Yes, sir. Um, Anything from you, Mr. Stroll? Judge, just briefly what we talked about in terms of MC witness, if I could prove Right. I mean, I, is that what yes. you still here? Yes, sir. And there is one other uh, police officer who is designated as a seat and is he's welcome to talk to either or both of them. Are they here now? I think uh, Jack Fire Rescue is here, and I don't know that the officer is, but we'll provide him. He actually works on the court. Okay. You want to let him talk to the court? Sure. Judge. Not a problem. All right. Anything else from you, Mr. Stroller? Not as of right now, no, no. Mr. Dunn, any exceptions or objections to anything that's going on today? No, sir. Happy with Mr. Stroller and his representation of you? Very much so. All right. Um, okay, well, then we'll be in recess until tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Thank you all very much. Thank you all very much.